Typhoon Mani left at least three villagers missing, destroyed houses, knocked out power in entire towns and displaced large numbers of villagers before blowing away from the northern Philippines, worsening the crisis reaped by five previous storms, officials said Monday. Mani was one of the strongest of the six major storms to hit the northern Philippines in less than a month and had sustained winds of up to 195 km per hour when it slammed into the eastern island province of Catanduanes on Saturday night. Disaster response officials said they were checking if the deaths of two villagers were directly related to Mani's onslaught in eastern Cameron's Norte province. They said a search was underway for a couple and their child after their shanty was swept away in rampaging rivers in northern Nueva Ecija province. More than a million people were affected by the typhoon and two previous storms, including nearly 700,000 who fled their homes and moved to emergency shelters or relatives' homes, according to the official of civil defense. Nearly 8,000 houses were damaged or destroyed and more than 100 cities and towns were hit by power outages due to toppled electric posts, it said. The Philippines is battered by about 20 typhoons and storms each year. It's often hit by earthquakes and has more than a dozen active volcanoes, making it one of the world's most disaster-prone countries. Sustained rain fell overnight in the Honduran city of San Pedro Sula, with no immediate sign of serious flooding. Tropical Storm Sara was forecast to drop 10 to 20 inches of rain, with up to 30 inches in isolated areas of northern Honduras. The heavy rain could lead to life-threatening flooding and landslides, according to the Miami-based National Hurricane Center. The weather system made landfall late Thursday about 105 miles west-northwest of Cabo Gracias a Dios, on the Honduras-Nicaragua border, the center reported. That is near Brus Laguna, a village of about 13,000 inhabitants. There are few other areas of population nearby. In November 2020, Ada and Iota passed through Honduras after initially making landfall in Nicaragua as powerful category for hurricanes. Northern Honduras caught the worst of the storms with torrential rains that set off flooding that displaced hundreds of thousands. Ada alone was responsible for as much as 30 inches of rain along the northern coast. Sarah moved back out into the Caribbean overnight and by Friday morning was located just south of the island of Roten, a small-scale tourism destination. In its latest update, 
The Hurricane Center said the storm was located about 170 miles southeast of Belize City and was moving west at 2 miles per hour, with maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour. Sarah was expected to continue to slow and then possibly strengthen slightly, but remain roughly on that path and threaten Belize's coast over the weekend. El desplazamiento lo va a hacer hacia el noroeste, a este punto, a este punto, pero cuando esté aquí, la, eh, y va a impactar a Belice como tormenta tropical, pero ya cuando esté adentro. La zona occidental del país recibiendo algunas cantidades de lluvias entre 15 a 20 milímetros, pero la mayor cantidad de lluvias y precipitaciones que esperamos van a ser en el departamento de Colón, Atlántida, y en su medida el departamento de Cortés, hablando cerca de unos... Eh, eh, 20, eh, 20, 30, 40, hasta 50 milímetros aproximadamente. Donde sí hemos tenido condiciones de, eh, eh, de comunidades incomunicadas es entre Colón y Atlántida. Tenemos 74 también personas albergadas en el departamento de Colón y un total de 587 familias afectadas debido a la tormenta tropical Sara, que nos va a seguir dejando lluvias para las próximas 48 horas.